saw your film on Sunday night via screener, and I was completely taken aback by how powerful the message was um, about family and friendship. And um, where did you draw your inspiration to write this screenplay? Because it's so powerful. Well, uh, it is based on a German film that I found. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw the trailer online and optioned it off the trailer because I figured if they could put that much heart and humor into two minutes that the movie had to be amazing. Yes. And luckily I was right because it went on to win the German Oscar for Best Film and Best Actor and luckily it was mine at that point. <laughs> what, um, they call, what do they call the German Oscar? Yeah, what's the German Oscar? Uh, Schultz. <laughs> Oscar! <laughs> Exactly, that's what they call it. Um, that's terrible. So, but but the reason that I that I did relate so much to the to the storylines is that growing up I was anorexic and bulimic, and so that that whole storyline obviously rang very true to me. But also, um, when I was fifteen, a horse stepped on my face, and so um, she stepped on his face. First, <laughs> so it was inactive. So revenge. it was uh, you know it's one of those things where nobody wants to be friends with a girl with a hoof print in her face. Um, so I was an outsider. And I have always related to characters who are outsiders. And uh, this film is, is filled with them. But it's, it's the same thing as, as like Breakfast Club, going back to that movie. Why that movie will always be a classic is because everyone feels like an outsider, whether you're the prom queen, the dork, the jock, it doesn't matter. So that is something that I thought was universal. You don't have to have Tourette's anorexia or OCD to understand this movie and to, and to feel compassion for these characters. Yeah, I think that the, one of the reasons why <clears throat> it resonated with me was when I grew up in Georgia, obviously I was, you know, not the typical uh, blonde-haired southern girl. Um, so I felt kind of like an outsider, but watching this film, it kind of is giving a thumbs up to those who are different, you know what I mean? And and the way you play your character, Vincent, mm. I, I I almost thought you had Tourette's. Oh, good. Because it was good. so, I mean, you just, it came on so quickly and suddenly, mm. but then you were able to kind of, you know. Yeah, that was that was the, the challenge of, of learning how to have Tourette's syndrome, I suppose, or to pretend to have Did you do a lot of research with anything? Yeah, but it, the, the funny thing was, 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 how you know if you were to look at it on a on a graph you know how the sort of the resting state goes to an animated physical tick and mm -hmm. back to that resting state and that was actually something that i had to work very hard uh, to 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 achieve you know was 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 to show the pronoun the pronunciation of ticks and not just have them all sort of meld together and be very unclear you know um so yeah, that was actually the hardest thing physically for me to to get over, you know, because I was all about like jumping in and doing as much as possible. But but what 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 made it I think more convincing is the fact that a tick can happen, a recognizable tick mm. that the character does again and again, and then it goes straight back to just you know being sat there normally. Yeah, well, there's so many different varieties of Tourette's. I mean, but I think the most notable ones are the ones that say you know expletive words and have like outrageous mm -hmm. ticks and things like yeah. that. So I think the vocalization is a mm -hmm. is, is something that's called coprolalia, mm -hmm. and often people who have Tourette's syndrome will su will suffer with copra coprolalia as actually, well. Actually, only ten percent of the time. Ten percent of the yeah. time, yeah. So it's and, actually not. Uh, what's interesting is most Tourette's is actually just physical and guttural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And coprolalia is only ten percent. You know what's amazing about Jackson Kramer was a guy we worked very closely with. He he's um, he was a spokesperson for the the Tourette Society of America, and he was an open book for us. And he's the same age as me, you know. And so, uh, I I, I kind of did most of my research with him through him, and um, he was diagnosed when he was about seven or eight, and. At the same time he was diagnosed, his father was diagnosed. Oh, wow. Like he's gone through, his, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's he's gone through his whole life having maybe smaller, you know, I suppose less noticeable ticks that might not, you know, might not sort of uh, um, you know, debilitate or anything, but still physical guttural things yeah. happening, but but just never, never had a diagnosis. And yeah. so as his son was being diagnosed, he was going. Oh my God, I think I have it as well. You know? Oh, wow. And so, yeah, it's a congenital thing. And as for your character, uh, Bob Rhodes, his, your portrayal of him and how a parent has to deal with this type of illness when it comes to your child, you know, you think your child's healthy, everything's fine, and then obviously in the story, it's second or third grade that he presented problems. So as a father, you know, your only son, I mean, the way that you portrayed him, where did you channel some of that 
because it was so honest, I think, in your portrayal, because, you know, some parents are so afraid to say how much they're either disappointed or how much they feel as a failure as a parent, like they feel like it's their fault. And I think that your portrayal was very honest. Well, that's a credit to Grenin, the way she wrote it um, and, and, the, and the way that uh, she directed the film. Um, that's the journey for my guy. <clears throat> Kira's uh, character, being a doctor, uh, sort of helps me, you mm -hmm. know, uh, find those things in me as we're, you know, on this journey. And, uh, you know, bottom line, Hopefully every parent loves their child. Um, I started with that, and I, you know, I have I have kids of my own, and I know how much I adore them. And then I, you just sort of use your imagination to think, my God, what if you were really presented with this? How would you deal with it within the text of uh, the world we're living in? And um, Bob's a very specific guy, goal-oriented guy, politician. Uh, say what you will, but he he's uh, he's that guy. And, um, you know, the way he dealt with that disappointment was to let the mother raise him, and, well, you saw the movie. So the journey was much more, you know, I, it's a, the road within me, uh, uh, Bob Rhodes. Uh, you know, where does, where, did, where does he find himself at the end? And um, it was a lot of fun. You know, I was really uncomfortable when I met Robbie um, that first day that we worked together. Oh, because being inappropriately flirtatious. He was... <laughs> Shame no, on he you. was, uh, you know, he had the Tourette's thing going on, and it's it's very jarring, and, and you know, you see so immediately integrate that into your portrayal as well. Oh my God, I mean, I guess this is what this would be like. I'd be on edge all the time around my kid, the stress. So there was a lot of things to work with. It was a very juicy part. And I'm really grateful I got the opportunity. Is that one of the reasons why you took the part? What, that, that attracted several, you? Several conditions. Well, there was several things. It's a long story, but, uh, you know, I, I, when I read it, yes, that was what appealed to and me. And Gren is because, so beautiful and charming. Well, Gren is beautiful and charming, but I didn't know that when I was talking about the phone. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 I heard about this through uh, a friend of mine's wife, Kara Sedgwick, mm. and... Uh, Anyway, I read it, and when I read it, it that's what they're feeling. I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm attracted to that kind of, to, the, to that kind of role. But I mean, both actors were incredibly courageous, uh, Robert Patrick, because he was playing a character that was basically unlikable for a majority of the movie. And I just kept telling, him, "Please trust me, please trust me," because once that character turns, it's beautiful. We did have that conversation because yeah. there was some stuff that she cut that I do. That's, you know. But, people, but, people would not be able to handle. Yeah. Well, but but that's just it. It's like so you know, and I recognize that in the editing process, and I said, okay, that's too far. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and I can get there, which is a scary thing. Right. So it's to try to temper that. There was, and, there was a and, kind of a military drill instructor feeling. As well. I had that. Kind there of was of like kind of a, an sure. authoritative type of sure. uh, uh, like you're not seeing aspect when, when, when you're yanking him out of, out of the car. The car. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I felt like I was I was being chastised. Yeah. In military. That was yeah. one of the powerful things about the film is that there were so many range of emotions going on and and everyone in the cast did such a beautiful job it almost felt like you were watching a day in the life and not just an actual film you almost were like this was actually happening is that's the feeling that I kind of got from and it. Is that life. kind of like yeah it was that's very realistic life, yeah. and that's one of the aspects of the film that really surprised me because sometimes when you watch films like this they kind of over exaggerate a little bit and kind of you know do a little you know not too aggressive you know because they don't want to offend anyone but this film was just very honest and that's what one of the aspects that I really, really loved about it. We tried That's very cool. hard. Yeah. Now, did you have a dialect coach? Because your English, your accent is perfect in the film. <laughs> it's true, yeah. Um, do you know the... <laughs> Not that I don't love your Irish accent, Bob but... Bob <laughs> you know... Bob Cork. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I just love the scene. It's true. It was. It was. I mean, come it was on. perfect. We're but it was what it was. It was. So <laughs> he, he came, uh, at having just done accent so it was already really good i heard a couple of words that you know because we really wanted just a, a middle of nowhere uh you know reno doesn't have an accent yeah and mm. so we wanted it to just be completely bland and so uh, i think it was it was a's for some reason words with a's in them and so i just uh took him to this amazing guy named bob korf mm. and uh he ran through and just showed him the the uh, words to look out for yeah. and, and then it was it was a, a thing of just I, whenever I do a job in a different accent, I just go in that accent for the whole entire time, you know, because 
if I'm coming home at the end of the day and kind of just going back into my Irish twang, I'll basically end up messing up, you know, the, the portrayal of the accent some way or shape or form. So I just stayed in, in the American accent the whole time I was there pretty much. And uh, I find that much more beneficial, you know, because after a while it's like riding a bike, you know, you just don't think about it. it just, yeah. It just pops out. And, you know, as I've been doing it, a, a kind of com a compulsion has come on. <laughs> like if I'm two weeks into a job, like I, I can't speak, <laughs> speak, speak in my own voice, even if I kind of try. I feel like it's a mortal sin. So I think I've ruined myself forever to, <laughs> to that method. Well, I've enjoyed the film and I, I, I can't wait for it to be released. And I hope the audience you know, really gravitates to this because yeah. it speaks to so many different genres, not just about illness or anorexia or OCD or anything like that, but I think just to people who are who are different or having challenges in their life, this really speaks to them and you have to kind of find yourself and this we're, film really speaks to them. And we're all different. Exactly. Yeah. Every one of us is different. Inside, yeah. outside, doesn't matter. Yeah, that quote unquote normal. I, I don't it think anyone exist. is really normal anymore. No, it doesn't exist. Nobody's <laughs> perfect except... <laughs> well, I didn't want to say it, you know, since they're here. Thank you so much. <laughs>